Cancer and welcome to Adventures in Pixieland. This is going to be a weekly reading going from March 29th to April 5th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind so we are ready to jump in. But before we do, let's handle the busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell below so you will know when Cancer content is uploaded. Cancer content comes out every single Wednesday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal read, please feel free to check out the description box below. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, please click on that link to my Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings, depending upon subscription level. Okay, so we have a wax and gibbous moon in Cancer square Jupiter in Aries so we've been building that foundation energy up to this point so you remember you gotta you know you've made all those plans you made all those I got all these ideas for all these things I want for the next 5 10 15 20 years yeah I'm gonna go get them now you you walk don't just talk the talk walk the walk okay it's time to sit down and figure out how you're gonna achieve those things even if you're just figuring out the next step because one step leads to another, leads to another, and before you know it, you're on your way. Okay, so just sit down and figure that first step out. You don't have to figure it all out, just that first step. You have a void, of course, moon happening at 9.45 a.m. And then at 6.31 uh, p.m., Eastern Daylight Time for both of those, the Wax and Gibbous Moon is going to enter into Leo. So most of the day, we're really going to be under the influence of just Mars and Cancer trying Saturn and Pisces with Venus and Taurus conjunct Uranus and Taurus. You are going to need your hobbies to help you, um, you know, find the, the happy uh, with all these sudden relationship changes. Be flexible, but understand that if you want to accomplish anything, you're going to need to be disciplined and focused. And I know those two things seem contradictory, and it's more like be flexible on what you're working on in any one given moment. But when you're working on something, be disciplined and focused with that thing until it is completed. If you follow. Okay. On the 31st, we have the Wax and Gibbous Moon in Leo, Trine, Sun, and Aries. So stick with what is comfortable today and take care of your own needs first. Don't be so fast to rush off and take care of everybody else. I know you got that, you know, that uh, parental energy going on in you, but, you know, you can't give from an empty cup. It's that kind of, it's a you day kind of thing. On the April, uh, First, of course, that's April Fool's Day, and we have the Wax and Gibbous Moon in Leo, trying Jupiter and Aries. There's going to be big ideas everywhere, and you're going to like it. But it is absolutely no trick. You are 100% going to want to open up your mind to these ideas and how to make them possible. Okay, but it's not a day for acting on ideas. It's just a day for thinking about them. Um, the second, we have a void, of course, moon at 2.03 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 6.57 a.m., it's going to enter in its waxing gibbous state into Virgo. So there is going to be lots to get done, and you can get it all done. You just got to stay organized and structured. Progress can be yours. On the third, you have the waxing gibbous moon in Virgo, Mercury, entering into Taurus and it's going to be square Pluto in Aquarius so communication will now take on an easier pace like everything is going to slow down Tauruses don't like to be rushed they like to be able to take their time and do things properly by their definition of proper might not be your definition of proper but it's theirs and in fact the fastest way to make a Taurus cranky is to rush them they don't like that feeling. They want to go at their pace. They are slow and steady wins the race. So any Mercury and Aries is it's like a lot of communication coming at you all at once. For instance, um, I mean, it could almost feel like overwhelming communication. And I give a very solid, uh, for instance, for instance, 
my Mercury is in Aries. <laughs> and I do give a lot of information all at once. When one asks about a subject matter, it just rattle off a whole bunch of facts about all sorts of things. And that is, but that's my communication style. But when the Mercury is in Taurus, it's not just how one personally communicates, it's the speed in which the communications are coming in. In this past uh, few, you know, weeks while Mercury has been in Aries, even for me who likes to give a lot of information all at once, it seemed like I have three emails, two text messages, three Facebook messengers, and five Teams messages all hitting me at one time. And I'm like, whoa, I can't answer all these people at the same time. Right? It's going to, that, that pace is going to slow down. All right? Now, this is going to be very important because on that particular day, people are not going to see eye to eye with you. There is going to be a high chance for conflict on that day. Right, so you're going to really need to engage those active listening skills. Don't jump to any conclusions. So take that slower pace. Take the time to respond, not react. Reaction is instantaneous. Respond means you stop and think. Six deep breaths or 90 seconds, which is scientifically calculated to be a moment before you respond. So you're thinking about the words before they come out of your mouth is what's going to need to be happening on that day. Now on the 4th, there is a void, of course, moon at 9.50 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 5.51 p.m., you're going to have that moon entering into Libra. So peace is going to be the goal in the evening time. And finding the middle ground, finding that compromise really all day long is what's going to make you feel secure, especially if you had tumultuous days the day before that after you and somebody have had a fight and things weren't really resolved it gets that weird awkward state you've got to try to find something that cracks the tension it's that kind of day on the fifth we have passover beginning at sundown which is happy passover to all of my Jewish friends and families and viewers. Happy Passover to you, Passover blessings. We have the waxing gibbous moon in Libra with Mercury in Taurus being sextile to Saturn in Pisces. So what we have here is a bunch of Venus energy, right? Because the moon being in Libra with Mercury being in uh, Taurus together, right? So that is a double whammy of Venus energy. And I do believe at this point, Venus is either already there or it's on its way into Taurus. Because just like all those other times, yeah, well, Venus and Taurus, so Venus and Taurus has already happened. So this mean it's a lot, right? So it's a lot of energy here in, in the goddess Venus arena is what I'm trying to say there. In the empress energy. It's a lot of empress energy. It's a lot of mom energy, okay? So long-term plans are easy to work on right now. And you might feel ambitious while working on those goals. And you should. You should always feel ambitious when working on goals. When setting goals, one should always be feeling ambitious. So let's get you going here. Uh, so Cancer, March 29th to April 5th. Cancer, March 29th to April 5th. Cancer, March 29th to April 5th. Cancer, March 29th. April 5th, Cancer, March 29th to April 5th, Cancer, March 29th, to April 5th, Cancer, March 29th to April 5th. Okay. 
Okay, I will clarify all these cards. Uh, but before I do, past, present, near future, someone to you, you to the someone, balance, outcome, summary. Okay? This is a general reading. Take what resonates and leave the rest. There is no gender in tarot. You are either walking up to someone and talking or someone is walking up to you and talking. Nobody spends their entire life only doing one or the other. And this whole reading is a conversation between you and another person. And also, going forward, when I use the term relationship, I mean a continued interaction between any two people. I'm not trying to define a particular type of relationship. It's your personal life. Apply it where it goes. Okay, so in your past, Six of Pentacles, you were looking for some sort of reciprocity that you did not quite get. And that uh, could have been with a Virgo here, if that Hermit energy. It could also, not getting what you wanted might have made you go within to think about things. Eight of Wands there, that's a lot of communication going back and forth there between you and another person. Pisces energy there with the moon, There's, it left you feeling in the dark, like you didn't know quite what to do. In, uh, that's in your present moment. In your near future here, there's some kind of conflict. Five of Wands, that is competition, conflict, physical confrontation. It can indeed mean a, a fist fight, but it could also mean a sporting event. Um, it can mean um, politics, world politics, office politics, gossip. It's people not minding their own damn business. It's usually like a group of people not minding their own damn business. Okay. And nine of wands. Let's put somebody in some defensive energy, man, where I'm seeing a lot of that this week. Everybody's got the nine to seven or something in there where it's just like, I will fight you. And I'm not sure what all this I will fight you energy is about, but okay. Nine of wands. Temperance card, that is Sagittarius energy, so you could be interacting with that sign, but you don't have to be. It could be somebody who is trying to seek balance. Notice the silhouette of the angel behind them with the halo, right? And the balancing of the light and the dark. They're trying to find balance when their communication is with you. Two of Swords, that's Minor Arcana. Justice card, you might respond back to this person by getting the law involved. If not, if that's not the case, you just might be undecided by uh, how to handle this situation. Seven of Wands is more defensive energy. There are hands at the ends of all these wands, but this person, they had zero Fs to give. So whoever this person is, I don't know if it's you or if it's them. We won't know until we clarify. If somebody, the one who's being the aggressor there, Right, the ones pointing the wands at this person, the one receiving the whole the wand pointing happening at them, they have zero Fs. If you're, if this is you in any way, shape, or form, if you're planning on coming in and strong arming someone, it's not going to work. They are not listening. If somebody's trying to come in and strong arm you, it's not going to work. Whoever this person is, it is not going to work. They do not care about that opinion, so it will not make a difference. You don't want to embarrass yourself. So careful there, okay? Uh, outcome here is the Sun card. That is Leo energy, so you could very well be interacting with a Leo. But it's also a card of illumination. Something is going to be illuminated for you about a group here. Three of Cups. Could be a group that is walking away from you with that uh, Three of Cups energy there. You see how their backs are turned. But it is usually a card of reconciliation, so we're going to have to see. Because the issue then we then run to is the Three of Swords. So there is heartache here. So it feels like one person is walking away and the other person is sad about it. It's anguish. They're in pain. And it could have something to do with a commitment. The higher fig card, that is Taurus energy. But it doesn't really necessarily matter. It is an institution as well. It is the courts. It's a marriage. It's the, This is Jacob's ladder to the into the ascension to that seed of life this is the you know the ascended master here so it's a religious leader as well it could be some sort of commitment there's something about this these look up the angel number 33 which the angel number 33 in numerology is the number like this plus this 
is the number of the Ascended Master. In numerology, the Hierophant card, which is the card of the Ascended Master, is the number 33. So that's kind of interesting to me. It's just a weird little synchronicity there. There's something of anguish in this commitment going on here. One of you seems to be walking away from the commitment. And the other one is sad about it. Now, it does, I'm not saying what kind of commitment that is. It could be anything. It could be somebody you thought you could rely on to do that thing for you, right? Maybe you thought you had lined up a good auto mechanic, but now they tell you they're closing. You know, it could be anything like that. But whatever it is, it's going to cause some sort of heartache for you. I don't know why that would be a big deal, but maybe you're one of those people who really loves your car. What is the Six of Pentacles in Cancer's Past? Pathway. Okay. You had to go looking for another way. What is the Six of Pentacles in Cancer's Past? Two of Cups. What is the Six of Pentacles? What is the Six of Pentacles? Okay, we'll take that. Two of Swords. This is definitely wants us to look. All right, so I also look up the Angel Number Twenty Two. It's two and two. That's your energy, Cancer energy. There. Again, Minor Arcana Justice card. But you're sitting in the Two of Swords over there. So you were feeling indecisive about this communication that came in, this Page of Wands, and about the reciprocity going there. It's led you down another path. You see, that is a transformative path. Those butterflies. Butterflies are a sign of transformation. Butterflies are also a sign that there could be, like, angelic beings around or spirits or things of that nature. Okay, so keep an eye out for those. What is this hermit card? You might have even just seen a butterfly right before the, a moment can happen. If you just see a butterfly, not just out in the world, but like a picture of one, somebody's got a tattoo of one, pay close attention. Something's about to happen. What is this hermit card about in Cancer's past? Sudden wealth. This, whatever this happens suddenly, what is this hermit card about? Page of Cups, what's this Hermit card about? Queen of Swords, what's this Hermit card about? Two of Wands. Two of Wands. Hermit card. Standing, you know, at a crossroads with that Two of Wands. Queen of Swords here, holding her sword up. Need to know this. Any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Heavy in the Libra. Also a card of Virgo. So, needed somebody to make a head over hard decision about a communication that was coming in here. This is double Virgo energy. Okay, just so you understand. About something, some sudden portion of this communication. And now you're standing at this crossroads. You were not expecting that to happen. What is this Eight of Wands? Maybe they were cold. The Queen of Wands, when they're being, uh, Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords, when they're being very factual, they can be very cold. Like there's no, no emotion there. And maybe you weren't expecting them to be emotionless. What is this Eight of Wands? What is this Eight of Wands? What is this Eight of Wands? Oof. Okay. What is going on with you, Cancer? Eight of Wands, Message of Concerns, Ten of Cups, coming from a community. Five of Wands, because there's conflict here. Your energy there with the High Priestess. There's Whatever's going on in this community, there's a lot of back and forth. right? It feels a lot like he said, she said, drama, 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 conflict. All right. Like, what is that? It's in your past. I mean, that's your energy there with the Cancer energy. What is this moon card about in Cancer's present? Toil and labor. There's something that's unclear for you about the work. What is this moon card about? Some of Cups. What's this moon card about? What's this moon card about? Ten of Wands. Page of Pentacles. Seven of Cups. Toil and labor. Yeah, something is unclear here for you with this work. It feels really burdensome. Seven of Cups. You wanna you're looking at 
options that you can do, thinking about you know, like some kind of offer that you either want to make. It feels like you want to make it. This just feels like you're looking at these things. This is what you're doing in response to all this conflict that you're like in the middle of. What is this Five of Wands about? I guess somebody had expectations. What is this Five of Wands about? Four of Pentacles. What is this Five of Wands about? Wheel of Fortune. What's this Five of Wands about? It's one too many, but I'll take them both because they fell like that. Okay. We'll look up the angel number 44. These cards are just full of synchronicities for you guys. Uh, so somebody had some sort of expectations, and that's part of why this conflict. They're holding on really tight, possibly being toxic. Could be a Capricorn that's holding on really tight. You know, you'll have to take your pick there. Capricorn energy with the devil, but it could just be toxicity. Like the whole conflict could be toxic. The whole conflict could be about toxicity. Four of... Oops. Sorry, sword of four swords. I'm taking a break. Wheel of Fortune. You know, there's divine timing at play here, right? This is because something wasn't dealt with in the past. Something wasn't given proper closure in the past, so the universe is throwing it back in your face and going deal with the problem. Somebody was walking around carrying drama with them and they weren't handled properly. What is this nine of wands? And now they just think that behavior is okay. Concern. Somebody's feeling defensive, so there's a concern there. What is this? Look, it's 33 as well. What? It might very well be this person who has the concern. What? What is this Nine of Wands about? Five of Pentacles. What's this Nine of Wands about? Knight of Pentacles. What's this Nine of Wands about? Eight of Pentacles. So definitely something practical in nature. Okay. Like, whoever this is, it's probably not, this is probably not a uh, family life. It might be friends, okay? Could be work. Eight of Pentacles. There's a lot of work. Somebody is is uh, really worried about being left out in the cold. So they are, you know, very slowly moving away from a situation. That's any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Heavy on the Virgo, which you have in the past there quite a bit of. Also a card of Leo. So take that as it resonates there's something about the amount of work that something is taking that you know, this person is feeling defensive about. Maybe they feel like they're being asked to do work that isn't their responsibility. What is this temperance card amount? Thief. Oh, nasty. What is this temperance card about? Four of cups. What's this temperance card about? Five of Cups, what's this Temperance card about? Nine, oh my goodness, Nine of Swords, this person is way, wow. So Thief is like getting the Seven of Swords, lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating, all kinds of worried about and sad about something. Something that's been rushing around in their head. There's there's some serious problem here. This person is very much so trying to find balance. And they're just uh, a no. Their, their answer to things are no. Because whatever this situation is in the past, this conflict, whatever, their, their answer to this conflict is no. Because they're sad. They are stressed. They are, you know, trying to find a strategy to get some balance. I mean... They don't want any of this. They feel like they're being lied to. Right? So they're, But their answer is, is just, no. I don't trust you. Stay away from me. What is this Two of Swords about? Message. Okay, you're going to find out about this. What is this Two of Swords about? Judgment. What is this Two of Swords about? Knight of Cups. What's this Two of Swords about? Ten of Pentacles. Mm -hmm -hmm. Knight of Cups. Any water sign? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I mean the Pisces. 
also card of Aquarius just feels like it's you you have some sort of action taking you have to do maybe a message you have to deliver first you got to make a choice about this community you're being asked to make a choice here you're gonna get some sort of communication that comes in that's gonna ask you to make a choice and you're gonna to need to take some sort of action whether you're I'm not sure if you're the one feeling defensive or not this feels like it might be their energy what is this Seven of Wands about in Cancer's Balance. Five of Pentacles. Over here. Alright, with this defensive energy. They were defensive before. They had some concerns. They expressed them. There's work that they don't feel like they should, you know, have to be doing. So they're moving away. What is the Seven of Wands? What is the Seven of Wands? What is the Seven of Wands? Uh -huh. Seven of Wands is clarified by the Seven of Wands. <laughs> I would look up the angel number 77. Nine of Wands, any fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Also a card of Scorpio, heavy on the Sagittarius. Uh, Leno energy there with the sun. Now obviously the sun's there, sun's here. So. This person is still standing very much in defensive energy. Could be an earth sign. Right? Over there could be a fire sign, which Leo is uh, is just one of. But this person is feeling mighty defensive and is ready to go rushing off into another direction. What is this sun card about with that nine of wands energy? Oof. It, you didn't know they were sad. What is this sun card about? Moon card, what is the sun card about? All this is stuff you didn't understand before. The magician, what is the sun card about? What's the sun card about? Six of wands. Okay, so. Get the moon card, you know, you're in the dark about this work, setting down this burden, seven of cups looking for an option here right you went looking for this option moon card energy what's being illuminated here is for you like you were in the dark so you were in despair because you didn't understand what the heck you were manifesting right this is Gemini Virgo energy right so Sun card illumination of this sadness you didn't know they were sad you you were in the dark you weren't even sure what you were doing you didn't realize it's kind of almost like there is a problem here, whether you created it or you didn't, you know, that's going to depend upon your individual story. There's a problem here that someone was creating for other people and you just didn't realize how bad it was, how bad this problem was, how systemic, how big of an issue a behavior was. What is this three of cups about? There we go. What is this three of cups about? 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 Eight of Wands. Lots of communication. Again, with this person, with this uh, defensive energy here. Possibly some travel going on. World card. Something about a reconciliation, possibly, or a group, a commitment to a group that makes this person feel very defensive. Lots of being told about that. Possibly some travel could be something just coming to a completion. It could be, again, like I said, looks like they're walking away. And with the world card being a, a card of movement, could be a card of movement and travel. What is this three of swords? Gift. Okay. What is this Three of Swords? What is this Three of Swords? What is this Three of Swords? Whew. Three of Swords is, uh, again, with the 33. <laughs> it's clarified by the gift card. It's like the Ace of Pentacles. Um... Three of Pentacles, which is about commitment, which is what the marriage card is about, and the Knight of Swords, a any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. 
heavy on the Gemini, also card of Taurus. I'm feeling uh, some sort of nostalgic. This is a person, you know, someone's going to be rushing in in your moment of heartache, offering something. Because this really does feel like your energy. This person's walking away and it leaves you in sadness. What is this Hierophant card about in Cancer's summary? A chore man, so uh, likely an authority figure. What is this Hierophant card about? Justice. What is this Hierophant card about? That's interesting. What is this Hierophant card about? <laughs> wow. Okay, so again, the Hermit energy here in the past. So it's this uh, the same person who had that expectation that you weren't expecting. It was this person over here with the temperance who is in the sadness that you, you know, you didn't realize that they were sad, right? You didn't realize they were in this condition. You didn't realize that this is the way it was. But because it's illumination to you, just exactly what kind of effect is happening here. This is just... Both of that, that's like Venus energy. Double Venus energy right there, because that's Venus, Venus. Okay, two sides of the same Venus. Now, they can both mean uh, like an authority figure, could be a judge, could be a boss of some kind, could be a religious leader. Uh, it's somebody here who has reaching, it could be willing to get the law involved, right, in this overall situation. If that's what's necessary there with that justice court, or perhaps they, the, what they do for a living, maybe you interact with them in their personal life, but they are a judge or are a cop or are a lawyer, Think of something of that nature, okay? Could be any of those things. Could be just somebody seen as an authority figure, but, you know, it could have to do with marriage. It could have to do with commitment. It could have to do with court documents. This could easily be... An indication of being served with divorce papers, or it could be an indication of being, you know, served with papers that, you know, where you're being sued. I mean, that's a possibility. Um, but it also could just be a, a like, almost like you lose a, one job because you didn't realize your boss was just this upset with you, but then another offer comes rushing in with this paperwork, and it's right here. Right? It could be those types of things. Now, it could also be that there needs to be some more balance within a commitment. And maybe that's been part of the problem is there hasn't been enough, uh, you know, too much give and not enough take from one side or another of the party. Whoever that is, whether you're mediating for other people or to you directly. Advice for cancer, March 29th to April 5th. Four of Swords, Advice for Cancer, March 29th to April 5th, Ace of Cups, Advice for Cancer, March 29th to April 5th, Three of Pentacles, Four of Swords, Ace of Cups, Three of Pentacles. Four of Swords is but taking a break, it's taking a rest. Y'all, you know, there's some kind of offer going to come in here, Ace of Cups. And that offer is going to come with commitment. So you need to be taking a break from the conflict now. Because being involved in these conflicts, being involved in these dramas, be keeping these people in your vicinity who create these problems, or being a person who goes and creates these problems, take that as it resonates. If you are the person who carries the drama around with you, you are actively blocking your own blessings. You are allowing other people's drama to disrupt your life in such a way that you're not getting the things you need. So you need to take a break from all this drama. Because when you take a break, a offer of some kind is going to come rushing in. But it is going to come with a commitment. Don't play around. Treat it right. Do it right. This is We're very much now, as we're, we're entering into these, uh, these different transits that we're in now, we're in a whole lot of put up and shut up. That whole day with the talk, the t talk the big talk, but make sure you can walk the walk. Put up or shut up, dude. You've got it. You can do it. Every one of us has this ability to be a better human being than we've ever been before. One day at a time, one moment at a time. You have to decide that your integrity and your wisdom mean more to you than the opinions 
of other people or trying to solve other people's problems. Sometimes when we solve somebody else's problem, especially if we consistently solve someone's problems for them, we are not allowing them to grow and learn. And as a result, because we're interfering in karma's lessons over there, the universe then blocks your blessings over here because you're keeping somebody else from learning lessons. You, if you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. Messages for Cancer. Perfect timing. Messages for Cancer. Within the next few weeks. Messages for Cancer. A peaceful resolution. Okay. Advice for Cancer, March 29th to April 5th. Prosperity lies ahead, new moon in Taurus. That happens on April 20th, by the way. So, within the next few weeks. Advice for Cancer, March 29th to April 4th. Communication is key, new moon in Gemini. Advice for Cancer, March 29th. April 4th. Believe in the impossible blue moon. What you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. Adjustments are required. Third quarter moon. Mediate, meditate and contemplate. New moon in Pisces. I almost said mediate. You might need to be, you might have been being mediator, but you need to be spending more time contemplating those choices. A win-win outcome is forecast. Full moon in Libra. Balance, spirituality, and practicality. Full moon in Pisces. Mm. Message for Cancer. Fairy portals. Wherever an oak, an ash, a thorn tree meet, know that we are there. This is a fairy portal, a bridge to the world of enchantment. A portal now opens up so you might enter a new world. That's a powerful message. All right, Cancer, I hope that helps because it is what I have for you. And as you go about the world this week, just remember that you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars, and you have a right to be here.